Uh, one thing to note as well, I don't, I don't believe we even talked about this earlier, but just real quickly, um, never mind, I'll mention the letter. This, this is happening too quickly. So we got the blind bands <laughs> taking place. Tempest and Fade coming out from 15, and we got Dark Lady and Tundra going from uh, Pikachu, and then the locks. Bubbles the first lock, followed by Ophelia and Pebbles. So can't say I'm too, uh, too baffled by anything that's going on so far, Trev. Yeah, I'm kind of interested just a little bit of the Ophelia lock. Normally, Ophelia's just gained so much um, popularity and just kind of regarded as one of the best heroes, if not the best hero in the game right now in this metagame. Yeah. Um, and with that being said, especially when you're, when you're banning out Tundra in the blind banning phase, to lock a, an Ophelia seems kind of iffy to me, unless you both lock both Ophelia and Glacius. I feel like that's the only way. Maybe we'll see a Glacius lock here. Swindle has one more. Wait and see. Wait and see. He's not going to lock yet, so I'm going to have to wait and make myself look stupid. Come on, Come on, Swindle. <laughs> Come on. Drag anyway, in the sun. other locks we have is the Bubbles, the Ophelia, Pebbles, Wretched Hag now, and then Kronos. An interesting lock right there. Yes, he is a very good, uh, well, he is a go-to carry hero, but really, in my opinion, I think he's quite weak. Um, but it, it would be fun to still see him. And actually, there's the Keeper of the, Keeper of the Forest lock there. So, yeah, kind of interesting. I, I still would have liked to see that lock with Glacius, but nonetheless, it's still available. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and some push potential. Right there. To, well, there you go. Ban on Glacius. Yeah, to start off the bat here. So, uh, I wonder if it's a case of 15, maybe making a point even that they could go for that Ophelia as a first pick with banning the Glacius. Mage ban the follow-up ban. Then we go to Demented Shaman into Draconis. One more ban on either side. It's going to be Nymphora. And the final ban, we'll see who it is. I mean, Jerezai is still on the board. That's definitely a hero that kind of you look at and see. Very rarely makes it through the banning phase. He is going to make it this time, though, as Moraxis is the final actual ban here. So regular picking stage starting now. But you kind of uh, call it. it seems like you're nodding your head. I mean, you expect Ophelia to very likely be a first pick over here from 15. Uh, yeah, from the lock pool, the definitely. Lock pool, yeah, yeah, that was just like an, a, a natural. Oh, you're you're gonna lock Ophelia for us, and you're not gonna lock Glacius. All right, see you, Glacius. Not gonna <laughs> deal with that. So um, that's a really smart job by FedEx for the win. And there's the first pick, Polywalk, yet again. So they want to use that, utilize that hero again. FedEx for the win played it very well last game. And again, I, I just love the hero. He's very, very strong. Even despite the fact that he had a slow start in that short lane, and despite the fact that we normally see Polywog in the mid, they still utilized it perfectly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was curious to see if we're going to see a Forsaken Archer ban coming out for Pikachu again, how well Flensmeister did on him. But we do not. Instead, wow, though, we see a Silhouette Magnus follow-up coming out from 15. And that definitely has some power, power potential there. And, of course, Silhouette, a fantastic farming carry hero. So I'm sure they'll be able to do just fine with her. Aluna and Torture, though, were the first two picks. And Torture, again, as we talked about with TT Esports, similar with really Swindomelon specifically, but Pikachu in this case, uh, he definitely highly regards that hero, especially more in a kind of even solo role. But Aluna, Torture, and then again, the quick follow-up with Silhouette Magnus here. Yeah, these picks are going by so fast. I know Swindom Swindomelon's really, really loves that Torture. Um, I think it's kind of awkward with an Aluna already on the board, but we'll have to wait and see... With the Luna on the board, I would much rather see a Torture in a solo lane. Mm -hmm. I don't like seeing two s supports like that. I really don't, unless you're very, very aggressive. The only time I like seeing two supports like that is when you're constantly roaming around. So something like an Andromeda is, is, is okay, in my opinion, when you have two supports like that. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. There's the Parasite pick. Kind of interesting, because I know that he hates picking Parasite, so <laughs> that's really interesting in itself. But I'm, I would not be surprised at all to see a Snap pick Ophelia right here. Yeah. Um, of course, it makes me wonder a little bit if that's what they're expecting, too. So maybe that's why they would even finish off with the Parasite. Right. As, of course, he's not necessarily a hard counter by any means, but he's a solid counter to a hero like Ophelia. Um, and no, no, no snap pick, but okay, it took a little bit of time, but <laughs> not, not really that much. No extra time still used yet. So Ophelia, the first pick of the lock pool. Now, you look at the upper team. They don't have a carry, and they're going to play without a hard carry. I thought there's a chance that they could have gone Kronos with their lineup, but they just choose to pass him up, and instead they go with Pebbles and Bubbles. So the Pebbles combination to finish things off here for Pikachu, and then you look back at 15. They went with Wretched Hag as their final go-to pick. So um, Pikachu... Clear, clearly the name of the game for them is going to be about early aggression and uh, wanting to have an early lead going into that mid-game phase because you go to the late game with this matchup, don't see much hope for them, so we'll see. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how the lanes are going to go out, though. Uh, now, naturally, when you have an Ophelia and you have some you know, certain aggressive heroes with the stuns on your team, you're going to want to go long lane. Yeah. But I feel like Ophelia is going to have a hard time jungling in the long lane against a Parasite. It's okay. Like, say Parasite's like, oh, I want to counter that Ophelia in her lane and go to her lane and, and, and mess with her. 
you you can still deal with that because it's your it's your side of the map. It's your jungle. You can still kite him around with your creeps and do that. But when you're going into their jungle and parasites, they're waiting for you, ready to go. It's a little bit more difficult, but it's, it, it can be done. Um, now they are shaping up in the top lane here. Silhouette as well as uh, Ophelia. Um, Wretched Hag is going to be playing that solo short, and then Polywog in the mid. So yeah, we are going to see a support Magmus. Not the hugest fan of a support Magmus, but it can work sometimes. We'll have mm -hmm. to wait and see. Now, now Magmus Silhouette. And Ophelia is definitely very strong, so I th it could work here. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of potential. De definitely a good amount of potential, really, uh, when it comes to kills. Now, granted, again, they're going to be playing against the short lane bubbles, being played by Swindemelons here. Uh, so we'll see if many opportunities even come up for them. But, uh, yeah, definitely a possibility. Speaking of going for ganks, man, look at Pebbles, Parasite, Aluna, and Torch all the way down here. They're really trying for something. They're going to go for a middle lane gank, and Polywalk Priest is creeping up a little bit here. But I don't think he's going to be spotted out. And they may just wait for the creep spawn even and try to catch Polywalk Priest doing some creep blocking. You see Polywalk Priest, though, he's actually going all the way up here. Did he is, see them? I, he must have. I mean, what else would he be all the way up here? There, it doesn't make sense for him to be up here, I don't think, at least. So I got to believe he saw them somehow. Bassett's here on Polywalk Priest. So he had to have. He's kind of coming back. Look, there's even a ward of sight placed here by TPS Priceless. But Polywalk Priest should be fine. Look where he's hiding. I mean... Very interesting that, yeah, they, they must have spotted them. So I don't know how. I like, think someone might have popped out there and just gave a little bit of vision right above the trees. I, I, that's what, or no, you know what I think it was? A Luna came here. She was trying to find a way to, to place the ward, but she was actually being blocked in the jungle there, or in mm -hmm. those trees. And I think she popped out on the upper right side, and I think she got spotted by the mid tower there. I think that's what happened. I'm not 100% sure. But either way, regardless, they, they were spotted. Polywog knew. Yeah. So a good job and unfortunately wasted ward right there for TPS Priceless. Well, that and obviously the initial resources. Now, granted, they are in the lanes now. So, again, not the biggest loss in that sense. But, you know, if he wasn't for whatever, however he got spotted, if that didn't happen as, as little as it was, I mean, that would be a bloodlust kill. you you got to think. I mean, there's... How many times do you see a middle player go all the way around like that, you know, yeah. expecting that never happened? So that you got to think that 100% would have been a bloodless kill. Just really unfortunate that they were just somehow spotted. So, yeah, big, big start here for 15 in that sense. The fact that they did not get bloodlusted. So, but other note as well, Bassett's playing this Polywire Priest this time around. Of course, FedEx for the win. He was on Polywire Priest last game, but kind of switching up some roles right here. FedEx is on Wretched Hag this game. And he's playing the short lane against what is a Torturer Aluna. It looks like P Book here on Torturer is the one, of course, focusing that farm. So now that the lanes are, you know, coming about, any comments you want to make on them? Um, I, I'm not quite sure about the Parasite down here. Um, he's going to have to get some really good creeps in order to get this, ca this kill in the Hag. He does pick up a <laughs> Minotaur, so just as I talk about that, he's got the best creep possible, really. Um, the, the Blink at level 1 from Hag is very, very low range. If I want to see the scaling here, it's actually only 775, so it's a considerable lower amount of range. They can time the blink. Can he get the stun? He does oh. get the stun, so really, really good timed stun there coming out from Z Freak. And, you know, RNG coming into factor right there. He does get a good Minotaur, and it makes complete, you know, good use of it, so yeah. good job right there. Yeah, look, look at what Ophelia is doing in the meantime. He's using a Vulture Lord, actually, here in the middle lane with a Tornado, harassing Pebbles. He even got a creep kill out of it, I believe. But uh, really pressuring the middle lane. And, you know, this is it seems like it's kind of a tactic that we've seen a little bit more lately here on the competitive scene with Ophelia players if they happen to get an early Vulture Lord. Just heavily. And look at Pebbles. I mean, he just has to fall all the way back right here because of how annoying that could be. So it's a good harassment coming up from Sweet Pro, a.k.a. Zet Pro, of course. Uh, playing here for 15. Now he'll go to his own jungle as he's going to be right next to a Minotaur Parasite though. And speaking of that, going to charge in right now. Pebbles is charging a big time. In comes a Minotaur stun. There's the Pebbles. Chuck, slag my combination. And down goes Polywog Priest. So Minotaur, or excuse me, Z Freak here <laughs> playing the Parasite. He's off to a really good start actually for, uh, for Pikachu. Yeah, definitely getting some good creeps right there. Some uh, lane switch ups have occurred. As um, oh wow, yeah. As Torture or Luna found themselves to switch here to the top lane, but right away they the, some counter switching. As FedEx to win is right back here meeting them again, and Silhouette's actually going to take this bubbles on one v one here in the bottom lane. So that should be good. It's quite uh, Silhouette should have a great time here against this bubbles. It it's really going to come down to the roaming cast of 15. Now Magnus can't roam that well. He does have level three though, so that's good for him. No boots yet, but Ophelia. Um, not the highest level you want in this game right now. She really needs to be a higher level than that. Parasite is getting the good levels. He's level 4, getting the good kills. He's 2-0 and oh already. With, after okay. that bloodlust, he's going to have a lot of gold. Already 1,500 saved up. So good start for um, Team Pikachu. 
So Wonder Melons may feel a little bit of pressure here in the near future. Of course, Magmus is roaming back down here, and you do have Ophelia with a Minotaur currently taking over. Uh, going to currently clean up this camp. She does have another Minotaur camp right here, but of course she's only level 2, so definitely no double Minotaur going to be coming out. So Wonder Melons will just port away with that Shell Surf. Good job spotting it incoming. He's going to be fine. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, blocked by Parasite once again. Coming out, in comes a Pebbles combination, and Pro Busk will get credit for the kill right there. Playing Pebbles, Aluna even came in. I don't even think he got credit for an assist, though. It was just a little bit too late, but the damage done, and Yet again, we have a case of a Poliwog Priest getting locked down here, this time in the middle lane, as he is now 0-2, and, and he's still level 4 on top of that, compared to a level 6 Pebbles now. So, man, you talk about just this very active Parasite at the bottom lane. Bubbles, speaking of being active, he's in a lot of trouble, but he will Shell Surf Port away once again and survive. Parasite Z-Freak, though, man, this Parasite pick has proven to be uh, very effective here early on in this game. They need to leave Silhouette alone. She can do just fine against this Bubbles. They need to get kills elsewhere. They need to support this Polywog. They could even get it. They could even roam around top and get a very easy kill in the Torturer. Very easy kill. Set up this. Yeah. Set up the kill with a haunt from um, Wretched Hag. Anybody else comes in with a stun or maybe two people, and that's a for sure dead Torturer. But they should not stay bottom here. They need to do something here in the other lanes. Yeah. Yeah, getting active elsewhere is definitely something we talk about a lot of the time. You see a Skeleton King taking over from Ophelia. Going to maybe need it right here. You see Parasite getting locked down. Can he take over the Skeleton King himself? Those big question. Is he even going to try to? Shell Surf coming in from Bubbles. He'll take over a Minotaur instead. And now a Turnaround going to be coming out. Ophelia in a lot of trouble. She is being chased down instead. The Silhouette's going to get stunned, though, by the Minotaur. And Silhouette dropping quickly. Yes, she'll end up falling. Smart choice from Parasite right there. The Paratho trying to kill Ophelia in the meantime. Shell Surf, not going to matter. The Leech comes out from Parasite. And Z Freak. Again, it's just doing so much work here. He is now 3-0-2, oh, and, and we're only five and a half minutes into this game. This is quickly getting out of hand here for 15. This is looking really bad for them. Yeah, I agree. Uh, they've lost at basically every lane, and z Freak's doing a great job on this jungler. He's, uh, he's getting very good spawns. Like, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. He's gotten like three Minotaurs, um, one of the uh, – what's the, the Invis guy? The Wild oh, the Hunter. Hunter. Yeah, he got the Wild Hunter from mid. And uh, he's using them to his full, their full potential. I mean, he's doing a really good job. He's roaming in every part of the map. Uh, I think the only place he hasn't gone yet is top. And right now it's kind of hard to, to kill the Hag. But Hag's already having a difficult time against this Torture, mm -hmm. who's had a great start compared to her. So, um, yeah, this is going to be really hard for them to bounce back in this, into this one. I don't know how they're going to have to do it. They're going to have to get, like I said, I, I feel like it's going to start with this top lane. Kill this Torture. That's pretty much the only person I feel like you can kill right now. Yeah. So, like, Magnus needs to roam up here, maybe even Ophelia as well. Maybe even the Poly. Get the whole gang up there, but just leave Silhouette down here. <laughs> Let Silhouette do your thing, and Flensmeister playing Silhouette. He definitely accomplished that last game. Top lane, Torturer takes out Red Dag. You mentioned Hag's been struggling up there. Obviously, he came in really at a disadvantage, and, well, that didn't help things amongst others. So, yeah, he is, he is definitely struggling, especially after that death, and... More bad news coming out here for 15. So they're going to continue to do what they can here. And, of course, holding on only seven minutes in. So very early on, Flensmeister is farming 256 gold per minute. He's managing some decent farm here, uh, especially if considering the circumstances. But, you know, the name of the game when the lineup was picked here from uh, from Pikachu was, was early aggression. They needed to get off to an early start with their lineup. And they have more than accomplished that. Not only is it a great early start, but it's fantastic. I mean, it literally is going, as you said, they're really just winning all three lanes. That's pretty much the best you can ask for. And so things are very good right now for Pikachu. You see another solid minion picked up here by, by Parasite. In fact, a Catman champion. Uh, he may run into Ophelia, but no, Ophelia's going to turn the other way. And Parasite is going to try to find an opportunity to make something happen. But it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. And he'll just quickly fall back. You have Wretched Act going over to the observatory, even picking up a health potion from there. But Torture just continuing to free farm the top lane now. And she has taken over, actually, as the top farm in the game at 340 gold per minute. She's got Steam Boots, Ring of the Teacher, Mystic Vestments. Another solid 400 gold saved up. May push this tower. She doesn't have Impalement, though, so... Not too much pressure going to be applied, and she'll, in fact, fall back. But, again, all across the board, things are looking very good for Pikachu. And still, lack of movement from the Legion oh. team. And, yeah, Wretched Act getting picked off there by Pebbles. Ran into him. Meanwhile, at the bottom lane, Poliwar Priest getting caught as well by Parasite and Aluna. And he will, too, fall. He was going for the rune. Didn't even get it. Now we have Magnus in a little bit of trouble. But he'll be get away just fine. Not happening here for, for uh, 15. Uh, I... I I really honestly wouldn't even be surprised if this was a 15. Get it? 15 yep. minute concede. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> um, but y this is just stumbling out of control right now. Chalice picked up on Parasite. I love that pickup. I think it's really, really good on him. I think Ring of Sorcery is just too much. 
for him. I think Chalice is just the perfect amount mm -hmm. uh, as far as getting that mana. And uh, they're grouping up here in the bottom. They can they have the ultimate ready to face. Or actually, no, they don't because he just used it a second ago. I'm wrong. But nonetheless, he's down here. He wants blood. He, oh, he actually oh! could have found a Minotaur. Yeah. That was unfortunate. But <laughs> he does use the mana burn nice. effectively. He gets the mana burn onto Magmus, who now can <laughs> cannot cast a stun now. Yeah. Or otherwise he could have. There's a power snipe coming in. There's the oh! bubble shell surf. So really good synergizing of all those spells. That's got to hurt. That was beautiful. You know, we both had the same reaction when he missed the Minotaur. And we was like, oh, that sucks. But the Vagabond actually proved to be the better minion right there. <laughs> yeah. The Mana Bird actually worked so well because it prevented Magmus from lava surging, as we saw. That was funny. And we saw the end result. So that you talk about just everything working out, literally just everything clicking. I mean, for Z Freak right now, everything is clicking here in this game specifically. And, uh, you know, for a player that we gave a little bit of criticism to for the, in that first game, of course, with his Tempest play and some of the item pickups, this game he's responding very well and no doubt the big factor in why they have such a big lead here. And like you said, I mean, obviously making a joke of it, but I really wouldn't be surprised to see a 15-minute concede at this rate. We're only now 10 minutes into the game, but as powerful as Flensmeister was last game, and again, he's doing okay this game, it clearly is just snowballing here, and you gotta, I don't think that's going to be stopping anytime soon at this pace. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you got to support Magnus, too, who's level 4, no boots, 90 gold. He's not going to get it anytime soon. Look at even Polywog mid has a chalice, by the way. Yeah. And no, no boots. boots, 10 <laughs> minutes in. No boots on Wretched Hag. No boots on Ophelia. <laughs> the only one but that's not steam bootless. boots on Silhouette. <laughs> yeah, the only one that's not bootless is this sil Silhouette, but... Oh, man, this is looking brutal. Anyway, there's a party down here in the mid. Pebbles does have an end of his rune. Goodbye, Hag. You are dead. Dead so fast that Zephyr can't even get the... Actually, <laughs> wards come down from Polly, but those are completely wasted. Oh. Uh, nothing's going to happen right there. Ophelia is going to get... Uh, actually, the creep is taken over by Zephyr. Some blocking is unsuccessful, but doesn't matter. There's the chuck. There's the leech. There's some auto attacks, and Ophelia will die very quickly as well. So this is just spiraling out of control now. Yeah. 15, 15. You can feel for 415, too, that it's almost a case of if they could concede, you know, they may even just have already conceded because it's just it's so ugly right now. Now, Silhouette, she's able to get away with the trigger grab at the bottom line. It's a good job despite the kelp field being used. But in the background, you see a hat trick being accomplished by Pro Busk there. No portal key even needed. He just runs in, gets the combo off, and gets the kill. Speaking of that, though, he is very close to a portal key. He also has a power supply, steam boots, and bottle. And he has another 1530 gold saved up. Fantastic start. And that'll even help more. Uh, Pro Torture does finally push the top tower. So we're now coming up to really 11 and a half minutes in. As Ustalagmite's in the middle lane. Will hit Polywog. No, he doesn't get the chuck off, though. Just a little bit too slow. But Polywog, again, doesn't have boots. So <laughs> Pebbles could have actually maybe gone for it. But he decides not to. Plays it safe. And Polywog will survive. Uh, but yeah, you, you kind of just feel we're on a, we're on a, kind of a ticking clock here now to that 15 minute mark and then going to be moving on to game three because really it's just uh, d don't see anything happening here for 15 in terms of making a comeback. It's just such a strong start for Pikachu right now. And I mean 12 nothing hero kills. That alone is just so impressive amongst other things. Bottom lane we see a big dive coming out from Bubbles actually. He'll show surf away. Uh, but in the meantime Parasite was also here trying to find something. But Magnus just hiding in the jungles, trying to live. He's not even worried about doing damage. <laughs> He's just trying to save his life right now. <laughs> he has been down here the whole time, though, but yeah. I, I will say, though, don't expect to see a 15-minute concede. I, believe yeah. me, when I saw 15 versus Complexity, that game two, I thought that was going to be concede, but they dragged it on for another 30 minutes after that. True. So that's one thing it's to think about. a little about. bit different, though. I, yeah. I know. You're right. I'm just, I'm just saying. There's that possibility. <laughs> they have been known to extend games a little bit sometimes. <laughs> Yes. Oh, God. Torture actually finding Ophelia here, but Ophelia is going to barely get away. Uh, portal Key just purchased, though, by Pebbles. As I said, he was getting very close. So he's level 10. He's got the Portal Key. Uh, he's not going to Homecoming, so he doesn't have enough gold for it, actually. So he's going to have to run somewhere and look to set up an opportunity. But I'm sure he'll find something in the near future. Energizer picked up by Z Freak, by the way. Yay. On Parasite. So, again, we talked about a last game. Just This has been an item ever since that buff. It's been lot, much more appreciated on the competitive scene, and it's obviously not every game by any means, but we are seeing it. It is becoming more of an active item, and that, that's a good thing to see. You know, That's what you like to see as far as uh, all these abilities and items in the game. You like to see as much diversity as possible. So that's good for the scene, no doubt. Uh, bottom tower going to be pressured right here, and I don't I don't think uh, peak, or, yeah, 15. Will they be able to defend this? And even if they were, you know, could they? So this is probably just going to fall. You see the Ballista's taken over by Parasite. And yeah, this tower will easily fall. In the meantime, Pebbles runs into a level 4 Magnus. 
and just drops him right there. So the tower goes down. Yeah, <laughs> I think game three is uh, is approaching quickly. Yeah, uh, th there's just nothing going what right at all, honestly, for the leading side. Astrolabe picked up on uh, Ophelia even before Boots. Hasn't Astrolabe been a minor totem? Um, I mean, just look at those items. Let's check out the GPM chart if you want to. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, just just pretty, it's looking pretty um, pretty brutal right now. But anyway, 14-minute mark. Um, 386 gold per minute for Torturer. 376 for Pebbles. They're all, they got so much. I mean, there's really... I'm, I'm fishing for things to talk about here to... to to talk about for fifteen. Damage 15. chart. You got damage, a all right, quarter of the damage done in this game for heroes has gone to pebbles. Ah. Even more than a quarter, twenty six percent. So there you go, that's something to talk about right there. Uh ooh, Zephyr getting caught in a vagabond later. He's gonna come out the war trap is an attempt and not successful though, but he's getting completely locked down. In the meantime, though, Pebbles will come and the Ophelia heals use, but Silhouette gets dropped for there. Batpots coming out from uh, Wretched Act though, and down goes Pebbles. So actually numbers advantage in favor of our Legion team right there. Despite uh, Silhouette being the one to fall, so finally get a couple of kills, and they're now only losing 14 to 2 in hero kills. But yeah, I mean, the fact that Silhouette of all the heroes was the only one to die just kind of makes you chuckle a little bit at the whole situation. But Polly sure did get a good chunk of gold there. Look at his gold now. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> he got two streaks Four as well, the, you know, the double tapped. Yeah, so he's, uh, he, he, he does, he got his little red booties, and. Probably just going to pass uh, upgrading those. It's going to go straight for a portal key at this point. So we are past the 15 minute mark. And, you know, maybe especially because of that team fight gave a little bit of hope there for our Legion team. So I'm going to stick in it for now and see what they can make happen, to say the least. Um, but so, yeah, if you're Pikachu here, you know, the name of the game is don't don't give oh. anything away. Now, in the middle lane, we do see, well, well, at least you see in text form, the Polywalk Priest is getting picked off right there. Obviously, it happens so quickly with that portal key pebbles. Really wasn't able to catch it on camera, but you get the the general idea of what happened, of course. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, Pebbles can Battle basically one shot everyone in this team. I, I feel like even with Silhouette, she's not on. Oh uh, yeah, her strength team boots that she will still die in one go. Huh. but yeah, I mean, this is going to be a, a farm fest here for this. Uh, as far as um, on heroes go, for this Pebbles, and the Torturer has his uh, Tablet of Command. Also, another twenty one hundred gold saved up on top of those steam boots, the Ring of the Teacher, the Mystic Vestments. Uh, other items, the Energizer, of course, picked up on Z-Freak. Strider is now on Luna. Grave Locket on Bubbles as well as Steam Boots. And really, the only one that has items is maybe this Ophelia. It doesn't have Boots, but Astrolabe. Mm -hmm. And then again, just Steam Boots, kind of your basic items on Silhouette. So yeah, again, nothing's really changed. Oh. Except for Magnus oh trying boy. to pour it out, but Pella says, Nope, you ain't doing that. Probus catches him, and Seal Kid will fall. There are a couple things to talk about. I don't know, uh, you know, not necessarily for this game, but... Well, one note is, uh, if this does happen to go to Game 3, which again, it's uh, looking like that's a very likely possibility, this will be the first three-game series here in the bracket stage, mm -hmm. actually, for the Dream on Redemption Tournament. So that's an interesting note that so far it's been all 2-0 victories uh, for the victor. And also, uh, something I wanted to touch on earlier, but the stage is going by so fast, but there is uh, another series going on right now as well as we speak. Uh, Q Squad 357 is actually playing... Uh, Dendi's Jungle Devils as well. That is the other loser's bracket first round matchup ah. that was going on. However, of course, you know, we're casting this one instead. And that match got rescheduled to today because they weren't able to make it tomorrow. But we'll be replay casting it tomorrow. So there still will be a cast tomorrow. We're just going to actually do the replay cast for that series. So just a heads up on that. Uh, and uh, for those that are wondering, you know, maybe if they did see them playing or whatnot. But uh, so that's just kind of a quick update on what's going to be going on tomorrow. Well, we have a little bit of time here to talk about something. Silhouette in the meantime, the bottom lane trying to survive. Ain't gonna happen. In comes a bat blast from Hack. But I want cost for your Pebbles with the counter. The wards go down though, and now Pebbles in a lot of trouble. In comes a Catman Champion for a nuke. The ward trap, or not the ward trap, but the tongue tied holding him in place. But you see the nice power supply used right there from Pebbles, and he should be fine for now. He turns around, chucks the <laughs> Catman Champion away, and everyone will live when it's all said and done. So again, a quick snipe on a silhouette, and they get the hell on out of there. Yeah. Uh had you not timed that blink properly, uh, he would have still died from that Pebbles Chuck on that creep uh, onto him. But it does blink properly, so it gets away scot-free. But yeah, the wards are used, so that's unfortunate. Silhouette is dead, and this is just kind of spiraling out of control. The heroes, the the kill score, by the way, is 2 to 18. My god. Yeah. We're at a 13, about a 14k gold lead, 10k experience lead, well, 9.3k 9, 9 experience lead um, for this Hellborn squad. And uh, I think this is going to keep getting worse, honestly. I, there's going to be little places for 
the Legion to farm. Uh, the the jungle is getting uh, warded for them or for Hellborn. So this uh, warden mid is still there. Well, I guess it's just being replaced over and over by TPS Priceless. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, things are looking bad. Pebbles can just again farm freely uh, on any hero that he wants to. I feel like Bubbles can even get this kill on Hag. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, yeah. Well, s something else uh, that I wanted to mention too. In you know, I, I know you're kind of... Oh, by the way, you see Hag. She actually gets caught by the Kelfil, but she's just going to Homecoming Stone out, <laughs> and he finds a little bit interesting uh, decision. I guess he, she, he probably thought he was already porting, right. which obviously would have stopped it, but Swinomones was incorrect and said Wretched Hag was even waiting for that. And sure enough, it worked out right there. So um, anyways, you see right there, I guess he, he thought he heard something, but no, he was incorrect. Uh, what was I going to say, though? Darn it. Uh, no, but yeah, you were referring to earlier when uh, 15 played complexity in the first round of the second game. You know, it could have easily been a 15 minute concede, but they they seem to drag it on. And, and but like I said, I, I think circumstances is definitely a little bit different this time. The major one being, I mean, there this is definitely they won the first game. I mean, here we are in game number two. There's going to be a, a third game after this if you lose. So it's a case of how much torture even do you <laughs> do to yourselves before you're just like, all right, let's just go to the third game. And make something happen. I gotta think that that's gotta be more and more frustrating the more you sit in a game like this. And in this case, if you're 15, you know, trying to make that 0.001% comeback, that's just very likely not going to happen. So I, I don't know. As you as a player, I mean, I'm sure you've been in situations like this before. Are you fine with? Would you be fine still sitting in a game like this, or would you have by now gone? You know what? Let's just move on to the game three here. Depends on uh, what's on, what's on the line. You know, maybe maybe they're thinking. If we can actually get a shrunken head on this silhouette and maybe win a team fight with the heels coming up from Ophelia, uh, uh, maybe there's a small chance we could win, you know? Um, yeah, it goes both ways. It depends on how much is on the line, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing, too, to think about is maybe they... I, I could see Zet Pro being Zet Pro. And actually, the blink coming out from Polly, trying to get the war trap. He does block him. It's not really a trap. Well, kind of it is. There's the ultimate from Magnus. It does get canceled, though, from Torch River. There's a heal, and they do get a kill on Book. So, um... Get a good pickup kill. Things are still looking horrible for them, but nonetheless, still making kills where they can. Um, but the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, I could definitely see Zepro doing this. Is well, we know we lost. Let's just drag this game out as long as possible and make the other team angry and tired. <laughs> you know what I mean? That mentality, yeah. As long as Let's we're having fun out. with it, we'll be fine in game three. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a fair point. And, you know, the funniest thing was, by the way, we see Bassett's getting picked off for their own polo RPS. He chased in, thinking they had something, but. Clearly, Pebbles being there, it, it, it wasn't going to happen. So Silhouette will pull back to Illusion, and she will, too, be fine. Uh, but the funniest thing, you know, would be if we're going to sit here and we, we eat our own words, and if, if somehow that comeback does happen, that yeah. would just be hell. You know what? I'm all for it. That would just be absolutely insane. But, you know, again, with with, with how things are looking right now, I, I can kind of see some validity to that, if of that logic of let's just kind of wear them out, knowing that, Sure, we may be going on to Game 3, but it's our decision whether or not we want to concede just yet, so might as well take advantage of that. But, I mean, I, and I'm sure, yeah, as a player, obviously, for me specifically, I know I'd be raged to the point of, yeah, screw this, I'm not going to play this anymore. But, you know, obviously <laughs> that's why I'm not a competitive player, so maybe that's part of it. But um, Codex Level 1 now purchased on Parasite here to go with that Energizer pickup that he had earlier. So as we talked about there, Portal Key's been used at the bottom line, catching Ratchet Egg, Parasite top, there goes the Pebbles combination. And Wretched Ag might have thought she was going to be able to blink away, but Pro Bus completely stops that from happening. And he is now getting a close to the 400 go per minute mark. You got Torture also up there. And then you got Parasite and Bubbles also above 300 GPM here. Aluna the only kind of short uh, GPM hero, but it's still not even that bad, especially when you compare it to everyone really on the Legion side. So numbers keep adding up in favor of uh, in favor of Pikachu but 15 they are gonna play the game of you know what let's just drag this out see what we can make happen yeah, they're definitely accomplishing that here Sharkhead <laughs> is in the works here for silhouette so maybe that's the big key yeah she's actually uh, less than a thousand away from it but um it's actually kind of funny to, th to see that uh that Aluna is only level six it's actually the lowest in the game uh, only behind that Magmus. yes she true. does have more GPM but it's still kind of just a funny thing to note. Magnus does have his, as you would say, little red booties, <laughs> as well as a couple wards on him. Uh, Polywood Priest has the uh, the portal key, and then, like you said, the shrunken head is very, very close, actually, on the silhouette. And um, I will say that turn potential with Ophelia is always there, with with the double heal being the astrolabe and her heal ability on her ultimate. So, 
Oh, Pebbles gonna get jumped here. War Trap goes down. The tablet out though. That may be the saving grace for Pebbles. In fact, turn around and look at the Hellborn team jumping in as a team, and they just absolutely demolish everyone on 15. So okay, now I understand. You know, maybe staying in there, but after that, maybe it's a point of. All right, we gave it a shot. Let's go ahead. Oh, no, they got this. Move. <laughs> Other team doesn't have a carry, yeah, man. They you're got right. You know, this. they do not have a carry, so that's a very good point to bring up. Um, yeah, that was a hell of a tablet out, by the way, though, on Pebbles. I think that was Torture that did that. I believe yep. he's the only one with a tablet. So kept Pebbles alive, but not only that, just completely disoriented 15 because clearly they were like, let's kill Pebbles. Oh, wait, he's gone. And then the rest of the Hellborn team just came in and cleaned up, as we saw, between Bubbles, Torture, Parasite and a Luna, and then Pebbles eventually came back in. So yeah, big fight right there. Oh, Kelfield completely missing by Swim Melons. A little bit of a, a funny moment there. Obviously putting the Love Sybil out, but obviously they know at the same time that they're in a very comfortable spot, so not the biggest deal in the world. But still 15. There's something. There's something that's keeping the Mitch in here. And we have a Sheepstick already on Torture, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's got a Sheepstick with a tablet and Steam Boots. I know it. He's sitting at 430 gold per minute. I, I really think that that's what they're doing. I really think they're just trying to... I, I think they're having fun. I know that Zepro is streaming this, by the way. Oh, uh, nice. On his own. Yeah, on his own personal stream. So I would imagine that they're just having fun in chat, having fun in this game, and just trying to drag this out to torture, not themselves, but the other yeah. team. <laughs> I really think that's what's going I, on. I guess that's the strategy. I mean, there is that whole let's wear them out going into the next game, but... I don't know. It just seems kind of silly to me in the end. I mean, oh I, no, it seems silly to me too. I'm not. I'm not trying to. Yeah, no, to, no, no. You I, know, yeah. validate what they're doing. You're just, just explaining saying, more yeah. so what they're trying to accomplish here. And you know, not to say again. For me, I, I, don't, I mean, we don't have the most experience on that on that level. I mean, obviously, in grinds like LAN events and whatnot, I can see that being a lot more effective. But for an online event where this is your only match of the day, I, I just, I just don't feel that. A best of a three series could ever really be totally draining and totally exhausting for players. I mean, I don't know. To me, maybe not so much, but perhaps that is something that would happen. But like you said earlier, we are kind of finding, struggling to find uh, legitimate things to, to state at this point in, the, in a game like this. Bubbles is going to get jumped on. We do see Pebbles going to throw him away, though, trying to help. And in the meantime, Kelfield comes out. The Stalagmite's head. Bubbles jumps back in. The Kelfield is placed, and Silhouette is completely on the run. Already one death on the Polywalk Priest. Silhouette will be able to get the hell on out of there, as I believe she pointed to her illusion. Pebbles jumping in the foreground once again, trying to check somebody. Couldn't get it off, though. Excuse me, he'll be uh, looking to get the kill on the Magmus and the Magmus being ported back in Magmus. Oh, at the last second, Book with the final auto attack gets the kill right there. Just not enough time. And Parasite picks up Ophelia as well. So we're going to group up now and probably push a lane. Or there is always Congor. In a oh, game God. Like this, so <laughs> they could go for Congor at the same time. They're not even going to do that. They're just going to farm out the woods. And <laughs> 28 to 3. This is kind of a r ridiculous game now. Kind of a ridiculous game, but, um, you know, there's always that shrunken head on silhouette, I guess. <laughs> Still being worked on. Yeah. <laughs> We've talked about that for a good 10 minutes now. <laughs> Flensmeister doing what he can. He's still managing 252 GPM. I mean, it's not like, I'm, I'm, I don't know what I'm saying. That's just, that's bad. Yeah, yeah. kill score three to 28. Three of those kills are all on Polly. Two happened at one time. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Well, Congor is going to fall right here. Also, they are and, doing it. Uh, yeah. Wow, with the DD on Might him. as well. Yeah, DD Pebbles, 529 max damage. I mean, talk about ridiculous. Uh, I guess, is he the one? No, they're just going to leave the token of life. No, yeah, he'll pick it up as uh, Pebbles now has that. Uh, Torture is going to get jumped here at the top lane. He does have a lot of life, though. Here comes a tuck tab, but Paul will be like, ah, crap, port's coming in. He's going to turn around. Chain reaction will hit, and adding insult to injury. Book is a big reason for turning around right there. In that fight on torture. Okay, there we go. There's a vote to concede at least. We'll see if it actually passes, but <laughs> there's the first step. GG's are being called. There we go. Okay, so 15 says, all right, I, I think that moment has come. Let's go ahead and give up here and move on to the third and final game. So I, I, I feel like we want to kind of address what happened in that yeah. game, and we had so long to talk about it, so it's not really much worth, uh, worth putting too much time here in the break, but... Um, yeah, clearly Pikachu, they went with a very aggressive lineup, and from the very beginning, it proved to just work out so effectively. And 15, just couldn't get anything going. Lack of movement early on just seemed to kind of hurt them too. So, 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we said it all, and uh, I, I think the the idea of having to support Magnus, again, I'm just not really a big fan of it. Yeah. Um, it just makes sense. You have, a, you have a ranged hero, you have a melee hero. The melee hero can't harass the people out of the lane, so you're going to have to have the ranged hero. But you put their carry on the ranged hero, just, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then, of course, the lane shuffling around. You know, Hag had to deal with the hard lane, and then it just followed her. <laughs> or I guess she should, yeah. I should say, she followed it. But anyway, just overall well played. Very aggressive lineup. Again, Z Freak played it very, very well, using the spawns aggressively. Got some good spawns with some Minotards some, and some Wild Hunters. Mm -hmm. And did exactly what it needed to do. So if we're trying to analyze a game of why they won, it's really, it comes down to Z Freak that game. So. Oh, yeah. No, he's, we stressed that from the very beginning. I mean, ever, ever since the Bloodlust kill came out all the way throughout the early game that he had, obviously in the later game stage, it was more of a, we have this one already, let's just have fun with it. But he was definitely a big reason for that success in that game when, when it was more of an actual competitive game in the beginning there at least. So, yeah, yeah big props to Z Freak, no doubt, playing that Parasite. And got the great spawns, but uh, as you say, you know, it's one thing to get great spawns, but it's another thing to actually use those great spawns to your fullest advantage, and no doubt he did that there. So uh, enough of that, though. Let's go ahead and take a quick break here, guys. And we will have the third and final game coming up for you. Like I said, the first th game three here of the bracket stage for the Dream Hunt Redemption Tournament. So that alone really excited for. And what was a little bit interesting to finish there. But hey, we got a game three coming up. That's what matters. So break your CBK. Joining me is Trial from Stay tuned, guys. Coming up next.